time to play ball. Welcome to the podcast with no limits. Whether it be sports, current events, or random thoughts, this is the place to step in and stay a while. Your host is a proud alumnus of Rio Hondo Prep, a former minor league baseball umpire, and a man with strong opinions. Welcome to the Get Home Safe podcast and your host, Matt Persima. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Get Home Safe. It is bright and early Friday morning. Well, Thursday morning for me as I'm recording nice and early. Get this out of the way. Get it out to you guys on Friday mornings. I told you guys a few weeks ago that when my alma mater, Real Hondo Prep, plays on Thursdays, I'll be moving the Get Home Safe podcast to Friday. So that's why we're uh, pushed back a little bit. When they play on Fridays, I got a pregame show that I do for them on Thursday nights. And so I don't want things overlapping. They're already close enough as it is, but we're making it work. So I might even push to Get Home Safe to Saturdays at some point because it's getting a little less listeners. I know most of my audience is Real Hondo Prep uh, people. And they're focused on the charge to keep podcasts, rightfully so. It is football season, so uh, we're trying to give them as much uh, of our time as possible. And a lot of people don't have time to listen to four or five podcasts, whatever. I'm only doing, what, three three a week. But still, people's time is valuable, and I value it. So good morning to everyone out there. Whenever you're listening to this podcast, appreciate your time. Still some loyal listeners out there. I know when it's just me, just me rambling away. Some of you are like, ah, oh, it's just Matt, Matt being mad. I understand it. I understand a lot of people enjoyed the the uh, guests that we had on every week, and things have just changed a little bit. I, I've done hundreds of episodes here, and now it's just a once a week episode here, uh, as I am doing the charge to keep podcast as well. But just uh, once a week for me to get on here and and vent and rant and uh, talk about sports, current events, whatever's on my mind. And I gotta tell you, I have I have three big things on my mind today. I, I'm fired up. Three things I'm going to go off on today. And so I hope you guys are, buckle up because today I'm, I might need a refill of coffee. We may need to pause this and go get a refill and then keep rolling. And then I have a bunch of charts to keep uh, podcast interviews that I'm doing later today. So I'm doing get home safe first because I'm, I'm ready to explode. I have a few things. I, I hope you guys are ready for this. And some of you may roll your eyes. Some of you may turn it off. Some of you may have to pause it because you're laughing. I don't know. I don't think I'm that funny. I Some people are, oh, it's hilarious. I'm, like, I'm just being me. I'm just saying what's in my mind. These are the sounds. What you guys hear are the voices that are in my head. Just as an I, just as an insight into what this podcast is. Maybe that should be the new explanation. The 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 voices you hear are the voices inside of Matt Hersema's head. And anyway, I hate speaking in third person. I don't like speaking in first person. I don't like speaking in general. This is, this is the thing people don't understand is I don't love like talking to people. I'll be social. I'll get, once I get to know some of my, my closest friends, oh man, that's totally different. But like conversations with strength, like I'm not against it, but it's just, it takes time for me to warm up. Gotta warm me up. I'm not a microwave when it comes to conversations. I need, I need that uh, low and slow. You know what I mean? Just uh, like a, like a crock pot, if you will. It takes me hours. And once, once we're there, ooh, then we're good to go. All right, enough of that. Uh, first off, happy birthday, Dave Hersema. As I'm recording on 922, his birthday was 921. If In case you ever need to remember Dave's birthday, as most of you know, I know him as dad, but uh, that, that great Earth, Wind, and Fire song, the 21st of September. That's my dad's birthday, September 21st. 68 years old. Wow, look at you, dad. Hanging in there. Just kidding. You're doing great. You're doing great. You happen to tolerate two uh, unique sons in myself and Sam, 68 years. I, I, I don't know how, how you do it. Um, you know, you're losing your hair just like I have. Yeah, yeah, your hair lasted a lot longer than mine did. So so there's that. But uh, love you, Dad. Happy birthday. Uh, good time seeing him on Sunday. You know what we did on Sunday? So I was like, hey, let's go over Sunday. His birthday was on Wednesday. Went over and, and hung out with him and my brother. We had, you know, some tri-tips, some burgers, some brats. No bread, no sides, just meat. That's what men do, I think. I don't know. And uh, and we watched our Rams. We watched our Rams. We we're in a good mood. They're up 28 to 3. Oh, this is great. And then the Atlanta comeback starts. All the mistakes from the Rams. And we just start laughing. We're just laughing. We're like, this is the Rams. Like, this is ridiculous. I mean, it's it shouldn't be surprised. So an early birthday gift for my dad is the Rams hung on for their first win of the season. And uh, what a collapse that would have been. But they, uh, they they managed to do it. So happy birthday to my father. 
a, a man who's been very supportive of me, not just with the podcast, but so many uh, other endeavors in my life, very encouraging and always there for uh, some words of wisdom, some, some, some uh, words of laughter too. What did he say on Sunday? He said, anyone who roots, <laughs> I don't know if he wants me saying this, but I'm going to, I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, anyone who roots for the, anyone whose parents encourages them to root for the 49ers should have child protective services called on them. And I agree. I actually, he, he was going that direction. And then we helped, we helped to uh, finish off the decree, the declaration. So yeah, I'm with you, dad. CPS, call them now. There's a pandemic going on here in uh, Southern California, 49er fans. And it starts with bad parenting. I must say so. But I've had good parenting over the years who encouraged me to root for a bad team for many years and suffer alongside him in the LA Rams. But last year we got to hug each other for a championship. It was great. Anyway, enough of my dad. Happy birthday, old man. Love you. And uh, yeah, just a good time. Anytime the three Hersman men get together, it's it's a little ridiculous. Uh, it's it's fun, but it's uh, it's a good time. And 68 years, two years away from 70, huh? We have to, we have to throw a big shindig for that one. Um uh, for my dad, that'll that'll be a blast. But football season brings about uh, not just uh, great times, but my dad's birthday every year. So happy birthday to dad. Um, Coach Jason Brown. Do you guys know who this is? This is a guy from Last Chance U, a Netflix documentary that followed a couple of junior college football teams, uh, community college football teams, as the, as the PC word they use these days. But uh, they, first they did it with two teams in Mississippi. And then they followed Jason Brown two years in Kansas and and Jason Brown is a California guy born in uh, Compton and played at Compton JC and and played at different places but he was a, he's been a coach especially at the JC level for a long time I actually officiated a few of his games when he was at Chafee College as an assistant coach he was offensive coordinator and he was a this is before I ever saw the Netflix stuff he was a fiery guy I mean just dude that it's like all right uh so a tough tough guy to uh, manage sideline with we'll say but a guy that was intense and passionate. And he was he was incredible on the last chance you just a no nonsense guy straight to the point. Uh, but he has a podcast now and he's breaking down quarterback play in the NFL and just talks football. It's called Coach JB. It's on YouTube and, uh, so you know, wherever you find podcasts. But it's incredible because he's a guy that doesn't hold back and he doesn't care what people think. People want to paint him in a corner as he's left. He's right. He's this. He's that. It's like, no, there's no corner. He just speaks his mind. He speaks the truth. And, um, you know, his his. His methods are, are not as, uh, as I don't know, regular, normal as, as you would think. Uh, un unconventional, unconventional, maybe methods or, or thoughts, which is what I like. I like that he'll he'll say this this running around of of Kyler Murray, this little flag football stuff he's doing is ridiculous. He's 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 willing to say that stuff and explain why he knows more about coaching football than I do. So he gives you some insight there, and a lot of oh well, he's a JC coach. How to work? I, I've told you guys before. A lot of great coaches at various levels, especially JC here in California. Uh, some of the best coaches around, they just, they, they stay in JC for, for whatever reason, tenure, or uh, maybe there's other issues. Coaching is very political. Like anything else is I'll tell you officiating is uh, part of the reason I'm out of it, which I'll get into someday, some other time, but uh, check it out. Coach JB he's on Instagram. Uh, if I guess the best way to describe him to my audience would be for those of you that loved Bill Barnes, coach Jason Brown is very similar to that with just more football knowledge. I mean, it, it's rated our language. I'll say that right off the bat. So uh, be, be prepared for that. But he gets straight to the point. He'll talk about uh, just some of the nonsense and he'll, he'll break down quarterbacks very well because he's an offensive guy and has worked with a lot of quarterbacks. So uh, check that podcast out. Check him out on YouTube and Instagram. He's a funny, funny guy. And again, he's kind of the, the former college coach that if, like a Bill Barnes basically is the best way I can describe him. Okay, I have three big rants. There might be a fourth, but three very strong opinionated issues today. Um, and we're going to try to get to those right now. Just let me get a hit here. Hey, fuel up. The old uh, Folgers. What do we drink? I have Black Rifle coffee, which is nice and strong. And it's almost pumpkin coffee time, which is the only time I I, I tolerate some flavored coffee. No cream in there. It's already, already got a little flavor in it. Just a little nice hint of pumpkin here as the weather turns. But anyway, all right, let's get to it. Right now, we have a lot of people struggling in America, right? Uh, I, I know I am. I, I got to assume others are. Uh, despite what you see on the news, 
things are not booming. You know, people are struggling. You go to a fast food place, you get a, a let me get a number two. Oh, it'll be $13, you know, stuff of that nature. Um, gas is high. It's It's gone down. And everyone's like, oh, look, the gas prices are low. It's like, they're not low. They're still high. <laughs> just because just because gas isn't seven dollars here in California, just because it's right under five, that doesn't mean they're low. It's still the highest they've ever been on a regular basis. Um, everything costs more. You can't go to the grocery store without buying a, a decent amount of food for for your week without spending, you know, a few hundred dollars. Um, everything costs more. We're getting all kinds of notices from Edison about turn your power down. It's hot, but but you know, just lower just enough so you don't die. And energy costs money here in California more than other parts of the country. I don't know why. Um, so there's all kinds of things going. I mean, you want to talk about being out of touch. A few years ago, some teams changed their team name. And uh, I thought it was ridiculous. Personally, um, most teams are made to honor, you know, individuals or groups of people or what. I don't know. There's a reason you're wearing their name proudly because you're representing that anyway whatever uh but in in the spirit of of changing names and my favorite is oh it's mad it's 2022 oh it's 2021 you have you have to uh come on in today's age this how can this stand how can this be a thing because in the woke culture we live in it's all about movement it's all about what let's on to the next thing it's called a progressive movement as adam Kroll always says it's always moving it never ends so I'm going to get on board briefly. I'm going to shock some people. Uh, people are really having a tough time right now. And I think it is inhumane, if you will, that uh, there's a team in the NFL that has uh, a, a, an identity that honestly spits in the face of, of a lot of Americans struggling today. In this economy, in this economy, how can we have a team name referred to as the Bills. The Buffalo football team, they have a responsibility to mankind, sorry, humankind, a uh, person kind, whatever, whatever word we're using these days. The Buffalo football team, uh, they're, they're one of the Super Bowl favorites, hands down. But I am making a proclamation today that they need to change their team name. When, when when some people hear the word bills, uh, it's, we, we, we cringe. We don't know. We don't know how we're going to pay that next bill. I don't know how I have these lights on here in, in the, the podcast studio. I don't know how, how long I can keep them on trying to do this, all these podcasts in one day, just in case that bill doesn't get paid. The In 2022, in this economy, I find the term bills offensive, insensitive, and quite frankly, cruel. And I, I demand that social change. Th this, I don't know why people haven't seen this sooner, why, why we haven't seen this coming. I guess when the economy is good, the term bills isn't, isn't that offensive. But we need to open our eyes. We need to look around. There are people struggling. Bills are a real thing. This is the face of society. We all have bills. Rich, poor, young, old. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly hurtful and a little traumatized by the insensitivity of the NFL and the city of Buffalo that they would allow this. I mean, they were among the first teams, I should say, I guess, in the state to mandate uh, vaccinations for their fans. This brave step they took, but yet they were unable to foresee that people would be struggling and, and wouldn't have government money coming to them. My, my gravy train stopped. I stopped getting that unemployment. I didn't know what I was going to do. I saw the Buffalo Bills playing on TV and I almost had, I, 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 I had a panic attack. I did. I said, I don't know why I'm going to pay my bills. Cause I don't, I don't know. This is a serious issue. 
And I implore everyone, please get I don't know when when we're gonna start the picketing. When we're gonna when if we're gonna go straight to uh the US Senate, we're gonna go to Washington. I know they like to change names, so maybe maybe they can help. But the Buffalo Bills, for all the great things you've done for the state of Buffalo and, and the you know, Buffalo also, just the city name. I mean, we can't even we get into that. Buffalo endangered species. I mean, why is that, you ask? We won't even go there. Your city's your city. It's been around a while. We'll stay off it. Well, let's get to the let's get to the meat and potatoes of the issue here, and that's the bills. The Buffalo Bills. I mean, how can you say that without feeling any kind of remorse to the people that have bills to pay and and can't do it? Are are you going to pay the bills? Bills? It's a question. In a, in, a, in a time when there's so many things that are problematic. The Buffalo Bills and everyone's supporting them. The Bills Mafia. That doesn't sound weird at all, does it? The Bills Mafia, that's your fan base? So maybe, are you? does that mean you're getting your bills paid for by the Mafia? I, I'm really having a tough time with this. Because after this show is over, what's the date? 22nd as I record it. I have nine days to try to come up with rent money. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I, I do have a job and, and have an extra job. And, uh, you know, the times are tough. This cup of coffee is all I can really afford these days. I get by. I manage. And this isn't about me. This is about America and where we're at right now. And the great economy that apparently is still the last administration's fault. I don't know how that works, you know. Urban Meyer was fired last year. Um, so whatever's going on with the Jacksonville Jaguars shouldn't be Doug Peterson's issue this year. So so there's that. But my charge to the Buffalo Bills, I need us to stand in solidarity. Maybe we can put a on Facebook, we can put a uh I don't know, put your instead of a like a a, a square, like a blue square or whatever. Whatever's the flavor of the week. Why don't we put uh, a dollar sign or maybe a dollar sign question mark? That would be great on all of our social media profiles as our big, uh, you know, and then a line through it. We'll, we'll come up with something. Maybe a, uh, a checkbook with, I don't know. We'll think of something guys that, that we can do. We need, we need change. And, we're going to start with the bills and we'll just, we'll go forward from there. We'll move on to the next NFL team that is problematic. And there's others out there. You know, I'm right. It's 2022 guys. We can't, we cannot have this stuff. And to just be completely oblivious to how most of the country is struggling and to continue to have your team name, the bills. Shame on you. Shame on you, Buffalo. You'll, you'll get what's coming to you real soon. All right, on to the next rant we go. It is football related, and uh, you know, guys, I've said this for years. I don't, I, I, I don't know when people are gonna. So years ago, the NFL started this thing where, oh man, these quarterbacks—they're athletic, man. They can run around. Let's have quarterbacks run more. And then for years, it didn't happen because why would you have? Why would you risk your quarterback having his head taken off by, you know, a linebacker? So they decided, well, I know what we'll do. We'll change the rules. We'll adapt. We'll, we'll change it so you can't even touch these guys. Then they'll be even more cool and athletic. Okay. So all this big fad in the NFL. Man, we got running quarterbacks. I'm not talking about scrambling necessarily. I'm talking about all these designed running plays. The zone read option. Man, why didn't we think of this sooner? Tell you why we didn't think of that sooner is because there was a time when uh, NFL was intelligent and the higher ups signing all these checks were like, yeah, I, I don't want my quarterback taking shots. He's already taking shots. Quarterbacks already take, say they drop back 50 times. You know what? We'll even lower it. Let's go 40 times. Say you throw 40 passes a game. And in that time, um, four sacks in a game would be a lot, but that's one sack a quarter. Let's say it's a bad day at the office and you have four sacks. Okay. So that's four times your quarterback's being tackled there's probably another eight or so 
probably double that number when the quarterback is getting hit and getting the ball away. So you could count those as tackles as well. And then probably three or four times throughout the game, he's going to scramble for a first down, maybe be tackle, maybe pushed out of bounds, whatever. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add to that number of our $40 million uh, uh, piece of, uh, you know, investment, I should say, not piece. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to have them run the ball. So we're going to add maybe five, six, seven times where they're going to run the ball and they'll, they'll get actually tackled, not like pushed like they would, but actually tackled where they can get rolled up on. And, 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 you know, so t- think for this guys, running backs in the league, they carry the ball. I don't know, 20 times a game, right? That's a lot, I guess. No, that's, that is a lot. That would say 10 times a game, 10, 15 times a game. You carry the ball. Uh, and those guys careers last how long on average, about three years. So why would you take something of that nature and put it into the most important part of your franchise and be like, hey, let's have him do that, which will shorten his career, but we want to invest a lot of money and have them be around a long time. And I'm bringing all this up because the whole Trey Lance injury all summer, all of last year, man, this guy's got great wheels. He can move. He's a dual threat, dual threat. That's my favorite. You should be multi-threat beside dual threat. But anyway. And so what happened? They designed running play, second week of the season. Oh, he breaks his ankle. Oh, man, what are the chances? How could that happen? This love affair with running quarterbacks is ridiculous. We have to stop. And it's not a race issue. Everyone's like, oh, you're just, no, no. I'm Tim Tebow, uh, Johnny Manziel. Uh, it's, it's nothing to do with NSF. Okay, this, this infatuation with the running quarterback in the NFL. It's stupid. You are You are so dumb to... If you want to every now and then call something, that, oh, man, they, they faked everyone out. You know, Peyton Manning, who would have thought he would have ran a bootleg? Okay, fine. That's why it's it, stuff like that. It's rare. I understand Patrick Mahomes runs runs around and, and creates time. Aaron Rodgers even a little bit. Russell Wilson, very good at that stuff. But you're going to call design quarterback runs in the NFL routinely? Are you insane? How many broken legs? How many broken ankles? Uh concussion how many of these things do you need to see well they'll throw a penalty flag sometimes a penalty flag it still it doesn't fix an injury it's not like uh the lord curing b- blindness of, of of somebody oh there's a penalty flag on the ground arise you'll be just fine you still get still someone that's injured even if they flag it like wh- and, and everyone defending it. It's hilarious. Oh, well, he's, you know, he's an athlete. Yes, yeah, ridiculous, you know, for you to think, oh, just because he got injured. Just because he got injured. I'm not saying every running play, a quarterback's going to get injured. But why are you why are you playing those odds? Like, it, it's just stupid. The NFL quarterback is one from the pocket. And, and Jason Brown said this, which which running quarterback has run, won a Super Bowl? Because you do get figured figured out rather quickly. Which one? Who's Who's been a, who's been a Steve Young? Guess what? Steve Young was a runaround guy. Then after some injuries, he settled down and became, oh, I'm going to be just a pocket passer guy. Six touchdowns at the Super Bowl against San Diego. Russell Wilson, not really a running quarterback. Scrambling guy for sure. But, you know, you see some zone read stuff from it. Again, I'm not, if, if, if you call it every now and then fine, but to make it a pivotal part of your offense is insane. And I'm the crazy person here. I'm the crazy one. Dak Prescott, a couple years ago, I think it was a scramble play. I don't think it was a design run, but it just goes to show it can happen anytime. Jimmy Garoppolo, a few years ago, he was running. He went to run out of bounds. Instead of running out of bounds, he made a cut, tore his knee in half. I'm not saying these guys aren't athletes and you, I don't know, how, how, else, how else would I say this? It'd be like, I mean, did you see Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant? You see them in the mix of certain plays, you know, uh, did they go up elbowing guys or something all the time? Probably not because then they, it would happen to them. Did they take a lot of charges, take a beating? The game's physical enough. And the quarterback's going to take some blows in the pocket. Why would you add shots in, in the running game? Well, he, he, he got to feature his skill, skills in the, in, the, in the running game. Then go play wide receiver. Go, don't have your quarterbacks run the ball. Why is this difficult to understand? Because then what happens, okay, well, Lamar Jackson, well, Lamar Jackson is insane and he's a freak. And I guarantee you this, as far as a long time, how long can you do that for? Do you want your quarterback playing until he's 40 or do you want your quarterback playing until he's 32? 
am I am I nuts here? Am I the one that's crazy? And this Kyler Murray nonsense, I, I, I'm making a, a bold co- proclamation right now. And he'll probably beat my Rams this weekend by like three touchdowns, and, and I'll eat my words or whatever. But then maybe the Rams will beat him in the playoffs again. So, uh, it is 2022. Kyler, I think he just signed a four-year contract extension, right? The big, the big, he got the bag. I hate that term, by the way, because it's very hipster and cool. And I, I try to go, go against those things. Um, so he got the big paycheck. I am making a bold proclamation right now. Kyler Murray will not be playing football in the NFL past 2025. And, and, and you could say I'm dead wrong, oh, man, but he's got all this season. He's got all of uh, I don't think he will play football beyond the year 2025. So if he takes a snap in 2026, we can come back to this episode. I mean, Matt, you are dead wrong. Whew. Okay. What else is new? But I, I just think he's a little guy, of course, he's going to run around. He's going to get figured out real quick. That that Raider game was ridiculous where he r- r- sat back there, ran around like it was flag football. Raiders rushed two guys. I mean, you got to put that guy in the ground. And, and, and I and I don't mean that literally, you you PC police. I mean, sack the quarterback, drop him, sling him around, throw him down. This it looks ridiculous. I'm sorry. And then when the quarterbacks do get loose, and then the defensive players are like, "Well, we can't tackle him," and so they look even more explosive and stuff. It's like enough of that. So just the guy already took a big. Just hit the guy. You get a penalty. You get a penalty. Don't go ahead hunting. But th- this this is just. It looks so stupid. The NFL is supposed to be all this, all this uh, creativity and this all this very experimental and all these offenses. There's so much time goes into these play calls. And you get a, get a guy back there running around like he's an eighth grade football player. Well, his skill. Can you believe he's able to do that against NFL people? Uh, it, it's ridiculous. And it's, and it's going to stop. They'll hit a wall very soon. And, and I've said this before with guys who scramble like that. By the end of the game, they're also, I mean, they're in great shape, better shape than I am, of course. But but by the end of the game, do you want your quarterback just huffing and puffing when he's got to make a game-winning throw? When Kyler Murray did, oh, Matt, your points are getting ruined here. I Look, it, it all works now. Everything works for a short time. And again, not to steal from plenty of other people, but the NFL stands for not for long. Most defenses figure out it just takes time. Remember the Wildcat, how cool that was for a year or two? Wildcat offense, ooh. And now we live in an age too with spreading the ball out and, um, you know, slinging it all over the place. But it's funny how when it comes down to certain games, you know, end of the game situations, running the ball, uh, eating clock, getting a stop, football still exists. Running quarterbacks are like dating a girl you shouldn't. You, we've all been there, where you're dating someone. You know what? This is probably not a great idea. It's gonna have some, some, uh, you know, some rewards, but some benefits, but. Uh, this is probably not going to end well, or man, this is probably not a great situation. There is, there's some problematic. That's my favorite word now that people use problematic. And I used it a lot today in my rant just to prove how stupid it is. But um, yeah, I don't know. But maybe, maybe I'm the only one who's dated people I, I, that I shouldn't have. I mean, like, huh. as it ended been like, yeah, I probably, yeah, I saw that coming. I probably shouldn't have done that. It's a lot of fun. Dating someone you shouldn't. Ooh, my quarterback ran for 80 yards today. And then at some point, bang, broken ankle. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have dated her. That was a bad idea. Why didn't I just uh, stick to the pocket passing? You know what I mean? You know what I mean, friends? Stop this love affair with the running quarterback. I'm sick of it. In the NFL, do what you want in college. Do what you want in high school. So you're gonna pay someone forty million dollars. Hey, here we go. Take this football, run around with those eleven, uh, those eleven guys trying to 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 injure you, or not injure you, but you know, are gonna tackle you, physically take you to the ground. And well, Matt, they can slide. Well, then slide. Fine. Don't get your ankle broken when you're sliding. But no, this is a pride thing. Oh, he's just competing. He wants to get those yards. Fine. I I am supportive of all that stuff. But Josh Allen, he's a beast. He's huge. Oh, he's still for my Rams guys. Yeah. Okay. I, I, how long can you play that way? How long can you play fullback at, uh, you know, the quarterback position like a full ask Cam Newton. Cam Newton was all everything. He was so big. Oh man. When you're that size, you can do hmm. the hits pile up. Just a matter of time. 
I'm not the lunatic. I swear I'm not the lunatic. And uh, honestly, the broken ankle probably helped the, the Niner fans because although Trey Lance is a very talented, young dude, and uh, the future is bright, we'll see now with the recovery. Um, Jimmy Jimmy G is I, – I don't understand why they're so willing to move off Jimmy G with all the success he's had, especially against my Rams. But that's just one man's opinion. So stop stop dating someone you know you're not supposed to. Stop it. You know it's bad for you. You know it's bad. Might, you might win some games. Might, might, might score some points, might get some yards, but ultimately it could end in a broken ankle. So knock it off. I won't stand for it. Patch my homes, you know, do your thing. Best in the business. <laughs> he doesn't take many hits. So he knows when to run out of bounds and stuff like that. But other guys, oh, I, I was, I was really tough in high school and college. Let me put my shoulder down. Eh, probably not a good idea. Don't be so brave. We have enough braveness going on. Bra braveness. Is that a word? Courage, braveness, whatever. Another hit. All right. Oh, this is uh, while I take a commercial break here uh, before I get into my final rant, which is college football related. Uh, I want to say that, you know, we all make mistakes. As I just mentioned, the whole dating thing, we've all done things we shouldn't have done. Uh, rooted for people, voted for people. We've all made mistakes. Uh, I am not the same person I was when I was 15 years old uh, as I am now at 37. Mm, some would argue differently. No, yes, you are You're the, exactly the same, which I guess is good. But Viewpoints, thoughts, you know, standards, beliefs, whatever. There's a lot of things that I've changed over the years. I used to think uh, listening to K-Rock music was evil, you know, back, back when I was in high school. And I was like, eh, why, why did I think that? I don't, you know, and there's a whole laundry list of reasons. But we all change. We all adapt a little bit. And something that someone pointed out, <clears throat> excuse me, to me last week um, was related to uh, me going to the USC game. And I went to the USC game Saturday at Coliseum. Man, what a place. It, just incredible um and pointed out yeah didn't you used to make fun of me for for being an sc fan and i did when i was in junior high uh even high, high school a little bit when did the transition start um i was a ucla fan and a very big one and i thought sc was was stupid and funny and uh so i i'm willing to admit when i was wrong uh we all make mistakes if that's my worst mistake that i've switched allegiances then um Cool. That's not a bad life. You know, I just, what was your worst? I uh, read for UCLA one time. What? How could you do? Unfriended. Uh, anyway, not my worst mistake by any means. Let me tell you, I won't get into that. But so, yeah, I was a UCLA fan and I, I was one of those guys. I still kind of am. That's the funny thing. I kind of, I'll always watch the local teams. Heck, I watch San Diego State and Fresno State. I watch those teams pull for them. But I used to be the guy that was like, oh, UCLA NSC. And everyone's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, well, why not? You know, and, and so I played that a long time, but there was a change in my life. Mark Carson, we went, he took me to a, a USC game and it was a bad team too. It was like the late nineties and they were like six and six or something, but we went to the Coliseum for the first time. I think they played like Louisiana tech and he took me to the whole thing. We saw the band before the game. We walked the campus. We, uh, we kicked the light post. If you're supposed to, like you're supposed to do, we just went to the game uh, early, the Coliseum, the, it's everything. I was like, okay, I get it now. Why didn't I, why didn't I root for this? earlier and again look it up i think it was like may have been paul hackett's last game or maybe he was fired before that but it was they were six and six johnny morton was on the team i think chad morton chad morton the younger one i think the running back so anyway i was uh, i was you know diehard ucla fan and, and they were really good at the time so that helped and then yeah I, oh i was a trader i switched allegiances whatever whatever i just i i hit to a point was like yeah i should have been rooting for these guys the whole time i should have been rooting for uh, a, a school that I actually have some family that has gone to that school. And honestly, there was a moment, I think it was college when I finally had the last draw, you know, you're with, with people, maybe you're dating people that are very, um, you see proud. They're very like, you know, looking down on me as a state school and like, Oh, you're you see reject. You know, I go to Fullerton basketball games and it was fun. It was all a good spirit. Well, not good spirits. I took it as fun. You see reject state school, state school. Uh, so I was like, yeah, you, the UC system and, and also looking around and I know, look at being on USC's campus last week, I was like, wow, this place is insane. There's so much money that goes here. And a lot of the students walking around, you can tell they got a little privilege, not privilege. I hate that word. Um, uh, just arrogance to them, elitism. Like that's the thing about college campuses. They're not real life, but we treat them as real life as safe spaces. This is where people go now and you can say whatever you want, except when it's, uh, you know, 
slanted a certain way. No, that's that's hateful and harmful and words are violence. This you can't do that. We want free speech, but you can't say that speech. It is like college campuses have become uh, some of the worst places on the planet. And I said that then I echoed something Dennis Prager said uh, a few weeks back to a friend. I said, college camp, college literally makes you stupid. Like, what? How could you say that? I'm like, because it does. Most most people, it makes you le- think less for yourself. But anyway, we'll, we'll we'll move on. Point is, yeah, I made a mistake at one time. I'm not like ashamed of it. I, I was a big UCLA fan. And um, again, that's my worst mistake. Fine. You know, some, pe- some of you used to be a Democrat. You moved on to Republicans. God bless you. Some of you, uh, I don't know, used to like soccer more. Now you like football more. I mean, I don't know why. You know, that that seems to make sense to me. But there's there's a lot of moments like that in our time uh, that where we were something and died in the wool, whatever. Is that the term? Died in the wool? What does that mean? But um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll address it. You have to. Oh, you've been an SC fan longer. Oh, well, you do. Your, your certificates in the mail. Let me let you know. You've been an SC fan this, this much longer. Cool. Great for you. Great job. Great job. But anyway, yeah, I. Uh, I jumped on board, switched allegiances, still follow you. I still watch you. I still make fun of them now, but uh, I still tune in and see what the Bruins are doing. Not to root for them, of course, but just to yeah, see how they're doing. So anyway, I just wanted to address that briefly when uh, some people, you know, want to dig through my past and cancel me. You were a UCLA shirt in 1997. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Get a life. So anyway, we can all change. That's the point. As Rocky said in Rocky four, if eyes can change and use can change, Everybody can change. Great movie. Underrated, big time. All right. I have two more rants. I only had one. Oh, no, I had. Four. I told you I had a bunch of rants today. All right, another rant. We'll go off the of sports for now. Uh, I, wanna, I want to quote our fearless leader, President Joe Biden, on a 60 Minutes interview. His exact words, the pandemic is over. Woo! Thank goodness someone said, someone at the highest level has said, has declared the pandemic is over. And for most of us, the pandemic's been over for a while. But we're waiting patiently on just waiting for someone to make this declaration. And as Lee Corso would say on college game day, after he said that on 60 Minutes, not so fast, my friend, says Dr. Fauci. The pandemic is not over. We still have panic and planning to do. And you know, we, can't, we can't live normal lives. No, no, we can't do that. But what the president said, the pandemic is over. What? Everyone's been waiting to hear those words from someone. Why? Well, no, 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 one, no one in our government has declared that the pandemic is over. So we have to treat this like it, it's... Still, emergency. We have to wear masks outside. We have to wear masks by ourselves driving in a car. We have, we, have, we can't live normal lives. No one has told us. Remember I just said a few minutes ago about the whole thing for yourself thing? I got to tell you this. Uh, when the mask mandates do come back here in California, probably around mid to late October would be my guess, or maybe after that election. So maybe mid October, mid mid November, not before the holidays, you know, just to kind of make things more, uh, more of an issue. When they do come back, I will not be wearing a mask into groceries. I complied a long time. I said, Oh, this is stupid, but fine. I'll play along. Uh, Shame on me for doing so. I will not be doing that anymore. And I will say Joe Joe Biden said the president, the, the, the pandemic's over. It's over. And it's been over for most people, most people around the country. Matt, you're hateful. How can you? There's people still dying. Yeah, 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 no. All right. And I'm almost tired of apologizing for this stuff. Um, But yeah, it was hilarious how everyone walked it back. Well, it's not really, it's not over. Like, and, and then this whole Martha's Vineyard thing, hilarious. For these these coastal elites who want to talk about illegal immigration, like, it's, oh, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, these are, you know, these are whatever they, they they use a new term every week okay fine well let's send them to you well that's cruel that's inhumane how can you you can't ship them like they're well you just said you have room so you don't care about the southern cities that are actually going through this stuff 
but you want to be all big, bad, and tough from your mansions and be like, well, we can't house them. There's no room for them here. Do you mean like America? Is that what you mean? <laughs> you walk out. This is what I mean about think for yourself. Look at logic. Don't don't listen to the talking heads. Think for yourselves. These people said the border's secure. We don't have a bunch of illegal immigrants coming in. Up here. All right. Down here. Says, okay, fine. Let's show you. They come up here. Then the people up here say, no, we can't have this. This is an out. This is outrageous. Send them back or send them somewhere else. And then we'll still say, well, the border's secure. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to have these people vote. Now I have to make these proclamations because someone will be offended and someone will say, Matt, you are so evil. I am 100% in favor of immigration to the United States of America. I think it's amazing um, that we have so many people who want to come here. My grandparents were in that boat, or at least my grandmother. I don't think my grandfather was. Uh, but uh, illegal, we have laws, or, or at least we did. this. But this is just the, the prime example that the left side of the aisle, they don't care about laws. They don't want they want lawlessness except for their their walls around their their homes their place of business but everyone else all you other peasants pay your bills and uh, leave us alone and you deal with the, the the crime in the cities I mean I don't know how many more examples I got to bring to you but yeah the whole Martha's Vineyard thing that was that was hilarious Governor DeSantis is a genius uh, Abbott hilarious stuff well they, they're kidnapping and sent no stop it again. The, the, the left uses these big terms and just they change the language of everything. Make you feel, make it seem extreme. And this is harmful and hateful and hurtful. Harmful, hateful, hurtful. Actually, that's hilarious. Harmful. I might use that. Triple H. Oh, when are we going to open our eyes, guys? When are we going to open our eyes? Rules for me, not for... Rules for thee, not for me. We've seen a lot of that the past couple of years, haven't we? Weird. Super weird. Anyway, last rant I'll get into. That was kind of a minor one. But the pandemic is over. Let's do it. Celebrate. Let's have a party, man. Let's do it. It's been over for a while. But it's amazing what people... Remember when? Remember the whole... Oh, the, uh, who, who was that? Was that Hillary Clinton or Obama? These people cling to their their guns and religion. You remember that quote? Years ago, well, I got I got a, a new quote. People cling to their COVID and panic. Let it go. And I want to read you something from uh, Zuby. He's actually a great follow on. Uh, I think he's British. He's a great follow on um, social media. If you guys are looking for someone to follow, someone to have uh, some rather entertaining posts and such. Zuby made a, a, a post that I, I put out on my uh, social media. He said, there is an ongoing pattern of one, something is blatantly obvious. Two, some people point out that the thing is blatantly obvious. Yeah. Three, these people are attacked and ridiculed. Time passes. Four, the experts concede the blatantly obvious thing was correct. And number five, no apologies. Now, take those five keys there and ask yourself how many times that has happened the past couple of years. I mean, I'm just curious. Thoughts? You tell me. You tell me how many times that's happened and how the people that were censored, and again, censored in one direction, all the people censored, uh, and told their lies. They're spreading misinformation. How often were they right? It's weird how often they ended up being right. Things now that are being said, well, we found out they were being said years ago and people were being told that. You can't say that. Why not? Probably true. You can't say that. Okay. Anyway, I'm moving on. I will move forward, but uh, last rant of the day here. And, uh, <laughs> I got to tell you guys, sometimes worlds collide and, you know, and you're just like, wow, that's interesting. How did that happen? So 
Um, where do I start with this? Well, let's go back to the summer. So in the summer, uh, a football player for University of Oregon, um, Spencer Webb, he wore number 18. Um, I think he 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 died in a uh, – they were hiking or something. I think he was crushed by raw. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It was July of 2022. Um, so, so he died. He was an Oregon football player. Very sad story. So this past weekend, uh, University of Oregon is hosting – the BYU Cougars, you know, the Mormon institution out here in uh, Provo, Utah. So BYU has always been someone that, in my opinion, is a pretty classy university, carries himself well. Um, I remember when I saw them at the Coliseum years ago for the national anthem, they all stood while the colors were being brought out for the national anthem. And USC fans were kind of like, oh, what's going on? And uh, so I, I that always stuck with me. And, and, I don't have a ton of experience with uh, BYU people, but I, I have umpire baseball up there. It's classy individuals, great, great people. And again, I mentioned a few weeks ago about the whole Mormons, Mormon, oh, the Mormon name. Oh, you hear Mormon and some people freak out. And I'm, usually I'm like, oh, Mormon. Okay. The good people. I disagree with a lot of the, the, you know, obviously their beliefs and things, but all the, all the Mormon people who I've met in my life have been outstanding friends and uh, you know, family people, family oriented, great values. So anyway, BYU takes the field, I believe it was last week, um, at Oregon. And they have with them, they, they come out of the tunnel with an Oregon flag. And on that flag was the number of Spencer Webb. And it said uh, Webb on it, the young man's last name. And I want to just confirm that all of that was, in fact, this last week. But I believe it was because, uh, yeah, that was week four. Okay. So, yeah, it was uh, last week. Oregon won the game 41 to 20. Uh, it was a top 25 matchup, Oregon 25, BYU uh, 12. So, Oregon, or excuse me, BYU takes the field, and they take with them this, um, this uh, excuse me, this flag, an Oregon flag. I posted this on my social media and it had some words to say. Um, and it said big O on it, web and number 18, an incredible gesture for BYU to do right. Very, very cool. And ESPN even posted uh, college football on ESPN posted something uh, yesterday, which I shared. And it said uh, very classy of BYU running out of the tunnel with Oregon flag that had uh, Webb's name on it, Webb's name and number. Yeah, absolutely. Very classy. And this, this article was posted uh yesterday wednesday and what you don't see is any mention on here um of course outkick does incredible work uh, clay travis and his people who work for him um they were the only outlet to post this and they actually posted this the day of the game or maybe it was the monday after the game that in the middle of the game or maybe late in the game uh the oregon faithful busted out in a chant and i won't say the full phrase because I don't want to, uh, it to fall upon certain ears. But the Oregon fans started out a chant yelling, F the Mormons. I didn't hear it. I haven't seen it. But I got a mat. It was F the Mormons. Pop, 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 pop. Right? So they, they just started out in this, in this chant in the middle of the game as they're playing a Mormon school. You know what to talk about a wasteland. Uh, Oregon is, is California North. That's for sure. I got some friends who live up there. God bless you. You're not who I'm talking about. But just the state of Oregon has really just anything, anything on the West Coast, anything that touches water is like poison now here in uh, at least touches an ocean, we'll say. East and West. And uh, the <laughs> so absolutely classless and and espn made no comment of that yeah yeah even though the even though byu and the mormons had this great um th this great uh sorry who's my words here gesture <laughs> to oregon for losing a teammate in the summer their fans probably you know mostly the students started out in uh this chant let me you know what i want to confirm that i heard it yeah yeah F the Mormons from students and the uh, and fans at at Oregon, as I mentioned with the the the, the clap that we all know, right? Uh, 
it was the first half. So the best part of this story, there is a good part, is uh, there's a high school quarterback, um, TC Manu Maluena. Maybe I messed up his name. The second. So following in his father's footsteps. Uh, he lives in Salem, Oregon. And was at the game, a big time football recruit. Uh, was excited to go see his home state school host the uh, event. And uh, let's see, he tweeted, uh, er, this is before the game. I'll be at the Oregon and BYU game this weekend. I got to sit in a lot of offensive meetings with BYU and Oregon during visits. So it's going to be lit to see both coaches and go to, uh, go to work. Go Ducks, go BYU, let's go. So a kid that was kind of on the fence about what school he's going to go to. And this is a pretty uh, big time recruit, I believe. Um, if you're getting recruited by Oregon and BYU, yeah, you're, you're probably a stud. So anyway, long story short, um, the chance break out during the game and my man, I'll call him TC. Cause that's his first name. Uh, Manu Malo Liena. I see. I'll mess it up. Um, he and his family get up and leave as the Oregon students are chanting. And do you want to know why? Take a wild guess. What religion would you think TC and his family are? That's right. They're Mormon. So you stupid, idiotic, so many other word, Oregon Duck fans. Again, you become stupid in college for the most part. Thinking they're big, bad, and tough are going to intimidate and talk bad about the, the BYU Cougars. You just lost a huge recruit because your students are stupid. And, and you wanted to be Mr. Tough Guy. And uh, quote, the, the young quarterback, this is from Outkick, the, the coverage. Uh, he spoke with the Statesman Journal about the incident. And he said, quote, I'd be lying if I said I, it didn't have some kind of impact on me. So Outkick covered this. They were the only people to cover this. And I have uh, tremendous praise for for them and I want to echo their statement. Can you imagine? I love playing this game. Can you imagine if some other religion or group of people was on the end of that chant? F the can you imagine the outrage and the media? But no, it's just the Mormons. No big deal. They're they're that conservative state. They they probably vote Republican. We don't we don't. That's not a big deal. And so great job by OutKick, as always, for covering stories like this. And I thought it was hilarious that uh, my man TC walked away from the game. I hope he does not go to Oregon. He goes to BYU and, and maybe beats the Ducks in a few games in his college career. So uh, rather rather humorous there. And just this this attack on Christianity, Mormon Mormonism, it's its, its own em- entity, right? But I believe some of the things, at least, uh, that Christianity does. Uh it's just, it's incredible. It, it is absolutely incredible. And and uh, ESPN posted, like, this is why I got so fired up and I and I commented on it and I posted something and, and kind of ripped ESPN apart was wholesome gesture by the BYU Cougars. So ESPN goes out of the way to post that. And, and again, props to, to BYU for doing that. But it was only a few short weeks ago and ESPN made no comment of, this is in spite of the Oregon Ducks with, no, no denouncing of the Oregon Ducks and, and what they did in that game after an incredible gesture from BYU. No mention of that ESPN. Also no mention in this article. Maybe it's somewhere else and I'm just losing my mind. But a few short weeks ago, ESPN, they lost their mind over a made-up event regarding BYU that didn't happen at a volleyball game. They reported it as fact. It wasn't true. So they're trying to use this moment here to fix what they did without their trying. Hey, look over here. We like BYU. Really? How come there's no apologies in this article? And someone's going to look it up. Well, Matt, look at they apologize here. It's not good enough. The 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 days you spent on a on a story that didn't happen, you guys look it up. Duke BYU volleyball. It didn't happen. Yet ESPN and other sports networks went out of their way reporting it as it like it did. And now ESPN turns around and says, well, BYU, what a great university. They went out, they 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 swung the flag of a of a, a Oregon player who died. 
and and no mention of by the way, yeah, we 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 kind of screwed them a few weeks ago. We probably shouldn't have done that. Outstanding reporting, ESPN. As always, your lack of journalism never ceases to amaze me. Um, and then wouldn't you think, even if you hated BYU, even if you hated the Mormon religion, wouldn't you think it relevant to your little story that uh hey, the Oregon students then turned around and chanted F the Mormons? Wouldn't that be, let's say the shoe was on the other foot and I don't know the someone else was being honored and someone spit on that and the and another team and a, and a Mormon school will say or a religious school a Baptist school whatever their fans spit on the whole situation the whole gesture they were like oh screw them blah that that would make your news that would be all over Sports Center so I am just I, I get I continue to be sickened with ESPN and the other shows they're they're so bad I can't even watch I was talking to someone the real game is just saying how much I used to love ESPN. I mean, had to, had to wake up to it, had to go to bed by it. I hardly ever watch it. Now I watch it for boxing, some UFC events, and obviously some college football, but their shows, I don't watch any of their shows. I can't stand their shows. It's all about, uh, you know, diversity and inclusion. We need this. We need that. It's just like, just talk sports to me. I love, I love anybody from any way of life or background that, can educate me on sports or has great sports opinions, but all the people they put up there are not, they're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. And again, taking something I love, like he is taking something and ruining it. It just bothers me to no end. Drives me crazy. So I want you to look up those stories. Look up that Zuby, Zuby quote. The outkick story was fantastic. The pandemic is over September, whatever it was, September 20th, we'll say, I think it was Sunday. So maybe the 19th. But no, 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 we didn't mean it. We didn't mean it. We didn't mean it. Pandemic, we still need you to panic. Go about your lives. Live free. Live free. Enjoy your liberty. And uh, don't be stupid, Oregon Duck fans. What What a... <laughs> F the Mormons, really. After their team runs out a flag with, with your dead teammate. And they're just students. Oh, Matt was a handful of people. Well, still. It caused a player to leave, your top recruit to leave. It was loud enough then. There wasn't any Oregon fans around them who said, hey, hey, knock that off. What are you doing? Did you see what they did for, for our, our dead uh, teammate before the game? What do you, stop that. But no. We live in a society where it's just join the mob. Join the mob in a negative way. Burn it all down. Protest. Blah, blah. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it all, man. I'm, I'm, I'm angry. Stop running with the quarterbacks. And uh, Buffalo Bills, change your name. For, for, for goodness sake. It's destroying lives. I don't know how many people are going to fail to pay their bills. All right. Enough for me, for me guys all over the place. I know. Appreciate you. Love you. You guys who tune into the get home safe podcast still uh, are, are incredible and uh, appreciate the support. I know there's not as many listens as the charge to keep, but uh, it's uh, still fun to, to keep this thing going. An opportunity to come on here and vent and rant about my frustrations and joys in the world that we live in. We'll see you next week. Uh, we'll recap maybe some football games, talk a little bit more about the things on the field, but I'm sure more things like this will pop up that I have strong opinions about. And maybe that's why you guys tune in. I don't know. Thanks for the support. Again, email me, uh, message me. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on these things. Feedback, of course, uh, get home safe podcast at uh, yahoo.com. I also have get home safe pod at gmail.com. If you prefer that and then social media, wherever you listen to the pod, always appreciate uh, your thoughts and comments. So send those in and we'll have another episode out probably on Thursday next week. That's kind of the, the uh, timeline we've been doing, but, but we'll get one out to you uh, weekly, however, and whenever we do so. Thanks guys. Have a great week. And guys, as always, no matter what you're doing, whether you're out on the town or around in third base, get home safe. Oh.